What are WebSockets and when do you use them? Typically in a client-server architecture, data can be pulled or pushed. So web browsers can update data by pulling it or wait for updates to be pushed. In the polling scenario, the browser initiates the request for the information. And if we need an update, we do a second request or a refresh. And if we only need to update a small part of the page, we are kind of forced to refresh the whole page. And this can be a little inefficient. Luckily, Ajax was introduced over 20 years ago. This allows browsers to only request update data from the server and refresh a smaller part of the page. This was great, however, as you might have guessed, the browser needs to keep pulling the server for data, whether there was new data or not. You could be pulling for a very long period of time without any updates. Depending on the pulling interval, we can just miss an update and have to wait the full update window to get the latest data. This is why a push mechanism was needed, and this is where WebSockets were introduced in 2008. The communication can be initiated either by the browser or the server. The browser doesn't need to keep pulling for data. As soon as the server has an update, it can push it immediately to the browser. Let's walk through a demo on an ESP8266 microcontroller. In this example, I'm going to use a Wemos D1 mini board but any module or board will do. Watch my ESP8266 video if you're not familiar with these terms. For sockets to work, they need to be initiated on both the server and the client. But before we jump into this exercise, let me first show you what we are trying to build. On the left, you see the Wemos D1 Mini connected to a potentiometer. On the right hand side is the web page with the socket installed showing the values as they are coming in. Now let's program it and see what's needed. First, we need to install a WebSocket library. There are many out there, but I picked one called WebSockets by Marcus Sattler because it looks very active on Git. Now let's open the WebSocket server example that came with it. In this basic example, it starts by including the libraries, then it moves on to create an instance of the WebSocket server and make it listen to port 81. Further down, the Wi-Fi credentials are located and they need to be updated. Then at the bottom, it listens to requests. Once a request is received, an event is triggered. Some examples of these events are the disconnect, connect, and text received. In this example, we will not be using any of these events since we will be focusing on data flow from the server. But if you want to handle data going into the server, this is where you do it. Now that we have the socket server added, we need to also include a web server that will host our code. There are plenty of examples that come with the ESP library, but basically what we need is to include the web server library at the top, then initiate the server on port 80, then start the server and add events to handle the client requests. In this example, I added two handlers for the root or home page and one to handle the not found errors. Then in the loop function, we listen to the new requests. The main page is handled by the code inside the HTML template block. This block includes the entire HTML code that is sent to the client. Inside the JavaScript block of that file, it contains the socket setup for the client. It starts by creating a socket object and makes it connect to our socket server on port 81, if you remember from earlier. This socket object can respond to multiple events. The one that is important for us is called onMessage. This event triggers when the socket receives data from the server, and you can do whatever you want with it. 
For example here, I made it print the message and assign the value to a paragraph block called Mr. DIY value. This block is located right below it here in the HTML code. So now that we have the socket set up on the server and the client, we can start sending data from the server. And this is done here. So in our example, I attach the potentiometer and I will be sending its value over to the socket. So first, I started by reading the analog pin value and then push the value over the socket. Any changes to the analog pin value should be reflected immediately on the client. And as we have seen from before, this is exactly what happened. The values are communicated instantly and this is the power of sockets. If you have been following me, you might have noticed my noise level indicator project. In it, I have used web sockets. I use it to update the visual indicator for the audio levels. One last thing I want to flag is web sockets don't dictate how we format our data. So we can send simple strings or more complex structures like XML or even pure binary data. It really comes down to the application and what kind of data is sent. WebSockets are very really powerful once you understand how they work. The WebSocket library examples and documentation are a great place to get started. I will also share the source code from this video if you want to use it as a starting point. I hope that clarified WebSockets for you and made you understand their benefits. Thank you for watching and see you in the next one. Peace.